This is a tutorial on how to make a StarCraft II bot using the Sharky framework. And in this tutorial, we'll make a Protoss bot with two builds, a Zealot Rush and a Three Gate Robo build. The Sharky framework uses C Sharp and .NET 5, and it's completely free and open source. And if you're new to the StarCraft II botting scene, um, bots don't play on Battle.net against real people, they play against other bots on AIarena.net, and um, there's currently two bots using the Sharky framework on here, and they're ranked 4 and 5, the top random and Protoss bots currently on the ladder. And what I use to build my bot is Visual Studio Community. It's, it's free, um, it's what I'll be using in this tutorial, but you can use any IDE you want, and you also need .NET 5. Uh, which is also free, and you can download it here. If you need instructions on how to use Visual Studio or .NET 5, it's pretty easy, but there's tutorials online all over the place. And you also need StarCraft 2, which is now free to play. Um, so everything you need to make a bot is completely free. So to start out, we're going to clone the framework. So you just go to Code, click Code, Click Open with Visual Studio, and then that will bring you to a new window in Visual Studio right here. You pick a path for it, and then you click Clone. So once you clone it, it'll look, load and look like this, and it comes ready to run. All you need to do is set the example bot as the startup project. So if you right click the Sharky example bot and then a little dialog will pop up and then you click set a startup project. It should be ready to run and let's test it out and make sure it works. So we just click this little play button right here and it'll start up. So it starts up StarCraft 2, and it'll start playing. And you can see it's giving you all this information here. This is just all sorts of debug information. When you have it in debug mode, it gives you a bunch of extra information. So you can kind of know what's going on. So it's just doing its you know normal build and all that. So let's close this. And then it also will run this little debug console, kind of telling you stuff too. So that works, that's great. So let's start uh, making our own bot. So we'll go to File, New, and then Project. And then we'll click uh, console app.net core, and then this one right here, and then we'll click next. And then we should name it tutorial bot, or you can name it whatever you want, since this is gonna be your own bot, but this is just what I'm naming it. And then you click create. So it made us a new project, and the first thing we wanna do is change it to a .NET 5 project, because that's what the framework uses. So you right click your project, go to properties, and it'll probably say .NET Core 3.1 or something like that. And then you want to change it to .NET 5. And then you want to save. Or just click Save All like that. So now what we want to do is we want to add um, the framework to our project so we can use it. So what I like to do is I like to add a new folder, which you do just by right-clicking the solution, and then do add, and then do new solution folder, and we'll call it dependencies. And then you right-click that, go to add, existing project, and then 
browse to where your project is. So we're trying to add the Sharky framework. So go to the Sharky where you got the where you cloned it. Open up Sharky and then add the Sharky CS proj. And that'll pop up here. And then you also need another existing project in there, and that's the S2 client protocol. So now we have both of those. And then inside the tutorial bot dependencies, we right click, add project reference, and we add the two projects. And click OK. And then we click Save. Now we can start making our bot. And basically, if you look at the example that the Sharky frameworks comes with, uh, we can basically just copy paste that code. So first thing we need is a game connection. So I'll just paste in a game connection right there. And if you hover over game connection when it has the red squigglies, you can click the little light and then it'll tell you what need, you need to add to the top, which is using Sharky. So you just click there and it adds it. And then after we make a new game connection, which connects to StarCraft 2 itself, then we need to make our bot. So I'll get a default Sharky bot here using that game connection. And then after we get our default Sharky bot, we make our own bot with that and i'm going to call it tutorial bot so we create a bot using the default managers and default debug service and these things you can override later but for this tutorial we're just going to leave them as the default and then you need to set your race so we're going to set our race with protoss since this is going to be a protoss bot and race as part of the SC2 API protocol, so you need to add that to the top. And then this next part of code is when you run it. So if you just run it using Visual Studio, you're not passing in any arguments, so it just runs a single player game against the built-in AI with the Random, against a random bot set to very hard difficulty with a random build and on this map. But if you're running it on the ladder or through a command line or something, you can pass in arguments and so it'll run a ladder game and then it'll tell you tell the map and stuff like that through the command. So after we do that, we click save and then we can run it and see what happens. So it's starting up our bot and it's opening up StarCraft 2. Can take a little bit to a little while to open up StarCraft 2 sometimes. So you can see it, everything loaded and it should start playing. So there we go, we already, we already made a bot. And right now it's just using the default framework um, bot, so it's just doing some kind of test build. So let's close that and start editing it. So let's make our own builds. So I like to put them in, a, keep them organized and put them in their own folder. So you can right click the project and then do new folder. And let's call it builds. And then inside that, you can right click, click add, and then new item. And let's call it a zealot rush. And then click add. So we're gonna make this a public class. And then we are going to call it a sharky build. We're going to influence Sharky build. Um, so using Sharky builds at the top. 
and basically you can just copy this part from the example but this is just the constructor you need all this information here and we need using Sharky at the top so we need a few things at the top and then we have our own build. We're not doing anything with it yet. Um, before we do anything with it, we need to tell the bot to use the build. So in order to tell the bot to use the build, we need to set this up. So we'll make a new class here. And we'll call it my build choices and add that. So we'll make this public. And then you can kind of look at the example bot for what we're doing here. But basically, we need to return uh, build choices. That's the goal here. So we need using Sharky builds, using Sharky default bot. And we'll create our build here. So this is our zealot rush that we just made another file. And then after we do that, we need to add it to a dictionary that defines all of our builds. So the key will be the name and the value will be the actual rush. So then we also have a thing called build sequences. And in there, we're going to have a sequence with our rush. And so the sequences, you could have, you know, one build after the other, like this build would transition to another build. But for the, for this tutorial, we're just going to have one, one build that doesn't transition. And then after you do that, we need this bit of code here. And this is basically saying against Terran, we're going to use these sequences. Against Zerg, we're going to use these sequences, Protoss, Random, and these are also our transition sequences. So you could have a different builds you use, to use against different races. But for this tutorial, we're just going to use all the same. So then once we have all that defined, we want to return a new build choice object that contains our builds, which are these Protoss builds here. And it contains our build sequences for every race. So once we create this, now we can use it. So before we create our bot, we want to set the build choices to our new build choices here. So if we save this and run it, we should see it using our Zealot Rush now. So I clicked play, it's loading StarCraft 2. Um, sometimes you'll see a bar that says StarCraft 2 is loading. The way I have it screen capturing, you, you don't see that. But it can take a while sometimes, um, you just have to wait it out. It's usually pretty fast for me. So now you can see it's started up and it's running and it says sequence zealot rush build zealot rush. So it is using our new rush rush build. And right now it's just building workers, it's building gases, it's building pylons. That's basically what the the framework does by default unless you tell it not to. But it's not going to build any production buildings or anything like that. We have to tell it what to do in our build. So let's close this. 
and go back to the code. So let's go to zealotrush.cs. And then now the first thing we need to do is override the start build command. So start build. And we want to call the base because that does a lot of stuff for us. Um, and then the first thing we want to do is we're doing a zealot rush, so we don't want to build gas. So we're going to set the build options strict gas count equal true. And then what we want to do is build zealots. So on the macro data, we're going to do desired unit counts. And then that's a dictionary. So we want to do a zealot. So unit types dot zealot, protest zealot. And we'll just set it to 100. And then another thing we can do is um, we can tell it how to use Chrono Boost. So we'll do Chrono Data. And then Chrono Units. And we'll make a new hash set because that's a hash set, which is basically a dictionary, but it can only have one of each. So then unit types dot zealot. So those are the only units we want to chrono boost. We don't want to chrono boost probes or anything like that. So that's uh, the this start build will get called every any time the build actually starts. So then when the build is actually running, we want to override on frame. And we don't want to call base on frame. It's actually blank, so it doesn't want to do anything anyways. So this on frame gets called every single frame. That's why it's called on frame. And this is basically where the, the main logic of our build is going to go. So we're doing a zealot rush. Um, I'd say the first thing we want to do is we want to build gateways as soon as we have a pylon. So let's do, there's a thing called the unit count service. And we can say once something is completed and we want it to be a pylon. So as soon as we have more than zero pylons, let's build two gateways. So macro data, there's a thing called desired production account, production counts. So you basically just tell it how many of a certain building you want. And we want two gateways. So as soon as there's a pylon, it'll try to build two gateways. And then um, let's say as soon as there's two more pylons, as soon as there's two pylons, so greater than or equal to two, then we want four gateways. So basically this is our whole build. Let's uh, test it out and see if it works. So I click play, it's loading StarCraft. All right, here we go. So it shouldn't be building any gas because we set strict gas count on. It's building a pylon. It's not using any chrono, chrono boost on probes, just like we said. Okay, there we go, it's building a gateway. Should be building a second gateway as soon as it gets the minerals. Yep. So now it's building a second pylon. So as soon as that pylon finishes, it should be putting up two more gateways. So yep, there's a gateway. There's a, So now we have four gateways. It's like we said, should be building zealots. And it's chrono boosting the zealots. And it's just automatically building more pylons because 
we didn't specify not to. So now it's building zealots, it's sending them off to go fight. So there we go, we got our zealot rush done. And um, the way that it determines how to attack, you can see some things over here, attacking no, ar no enemy army. And it'll, it'll look at, it says it has a 96, that's the chances of winning right there. Um, so it'll, it'll basically determine how much enemy army is there, and if it thinks it'll win, it'll attack. If it doesn't think it will win, it will retreat. And you can change that logic too. That's just built into the framework. So now we've made our Zealot Rush build. Let's close this and let's make our three gate robo build. So we can basically just copy our Zealot Rush build to start out. So I just control C, control V, and then let's rename this. I'm gonna call it three gate robo, hit enter. We will copy that name, change it here. And then let's just delete this stuff for now. And we'll delete this for now and save it. Um, we have to, before we can use this build, we have to add it to our build choices. So we have our Zealot Rush, we want to We want to change that to our three gate robo. So then here we just copy this, but we change the name. So the way that the framework works for choosing builds is it just goes in order and it'll keep using the same build over and over again until that build loses. So the we're, if we put three gate robo as the first build, that'll be the first build it uses. And then as soon as it loses a game, it'll try a Zella Rush build. And you can change this too, but that's just how the, the default framework works. So we've created our, we've added our build to the build choices. So now if we run, it should be using this build. So let's try that out. So we're loading StarCraft 2 now. And if we take a look at the debug information as soon as this starts up, instead of Zealot Rush for the build, it says three gate robo. So we are using our new build and you can see we didn't build a pylon first because it is actually using that code. So let's close that down. So let's start programming our build. So chronode units, um, let's chrono boost some probes. So get our economy going and then basically we want all robo units to be chrono boosted. So immortal, observer, and warp prism. So then um, we can also chrono boost upgrades. So let's do an upgrade. Let's do warp gate research because what's the point of having, you know, just regular gateways? Warp gates are way better. So let's see, we got our chrono stuff set up. Now let's do the actual logic here. Um, so let's do something similar than to before. 
So as soon as we have a pylon, let's build a gateway. And so we can basically do, before we just did like this and we built the gateway, but what I like to do is I like to do a little if statement and say, if we desire less than one, set it to one. Because later on, if you have logic where you're like setting it to, you know, five or something, you don't want to just be constantly overriding that for no reason. So that's kind of the logic that I generally follow. So as soon as we have a gateway, um, we probably want to build zealots. That's, let's say, so instead of completing a pylon, as soon as we build, complete a gateway, let's say we want um, one zealot now. So before what we did is we just did this, but I also like to wrap this into an if statement. So if when we get a one gateway, let's build a zealot, then let's immediately get a cybernetics core. So one of the differences between a cybernetics core and a gateway is a gateway is a production building, but a cybernetics core is a tech building. So we set desired tech counts of cybernetics core equal to one. So the tech counts and the production counts are separated out. So then basically we'll follow this logic again. And as soon as we have our cybernetics core, um, I'd say we build a stalker. So we'll just copy this code, but change it to stalker. So let's build one stalker and then um, once we do that we should build our robotics facility so we can basically just copy the gateway but change it to robotics facility and um, I think we also want to start our warp gate researcher since we have our cybernetics core. So that would be macro data dot desired up oops. Desired upgrades. And warp gate research. So we set that to true. Um and then Let's say as soon as we finish our robotics facility, well, we want uh, we actually want three gateways because we're doing a three gate robo. So we can copy this code and go three. And then we want to start building more stalkers. So Let's say we want four stalkers then, because we already have the one. Then we'll now we'll have three more gateways, so build three more stalkers with those gateways. Um, and so we don't really want to wait till the robotics facility is completed to do that. We would just want to have it start building, so we can actually just do count there. So as soon as this building starts building and we have one started building, we'll build the gateways and the stalkers. And then let's do something when it actually is completed. So when it actually is completed, we can actually start building units out of it. 
So I would say we build an immortal. So desired unit count, immortal. And then after we get an immortal, let's build some other units. Um, so once we have an immortal, let's build more stalkers and a warp prison. So let's copy this for stalkers. And let's say now we want like 10 stalkers. And we immediately want a warp prison. So, nope. There we go, warp prison. And then once we get a warp prism, we're going to want an observer. So finish a warp prism, get an observer. And let's say after we get an observer, we just want to go all out with our immortals and stalkers. So let's do something like that. So let's test this build out. So we're starting it up. All right, so our probes are mining. We didn't tell it to, to not get gas first, so it's just doing that. If we wanted, we could do strict gas count and then wait till we get like a pylon and a gateway or something and then start building gas, but we'll just let it get gas right away for now. You can optimize this build on your own if you want. This is just a tutorial. So we got a gateway. As soon as this gateway is done, we should be getting a cybernetics core and a zealot. So there we go. It's building the zealot, the cyber core. So one of the the cool things about this is debugging. Um, so if I show you the code again you can just put like a breakpoint right here and you can kind of follow along what the code is actually doing so it has a gateway it's doing all that stuff it doesn't have a cybernetic core completed yet so it's skipping over and basically it's skipping over all this rest of the stuff so i can just remove my breakpoint go back to the game But it's very easy to, you know, debug what's going on if you were to have a mistake in your code or something. So one of the things with the StarCraft game itself is when you connect it to something like um, your own code, you can't just click around on this mini map to, to move around, which is kind of annoying. You have to use the arrow keys. That's some. That's just an issue with StarCraft to itself. It's not really. It doesn't have anything to do with the code. It's kind of annoying. So let's see. We have our. We can. You can see our units are. Attacking, but they're waiting to group up and stuff like that. So here we go. It's building our first immortal. It's building stalkers. It's automatically changing the gateways into warp gates because our warp gate finished. That's just part of the framework. It's still chrono boosting out probes because we didn't tell it not to. But you could you could modify the chrono data to not do that. So it built an immortal. So next it should be building a warp prism. But it looks like it's still building more stalkers. And the reason for that is so if we go look at our code, so 
So right now, if we look at desired unit counts, um, let's see. So if we look at our desired unit counts, we can hover over here and see the data. And it shows on here, We want one warp prism, so yes, it should be trying to build a warp prism, but we also want 10 stalkers, and a warp prism costs more money than a stalker, so it's going to end up building stalkers and then running out of money before it has warp prisms. So what we really need to do, instead of building 10 stalkers right here, let's say something like five stalkers. So then it will get a warp prism faster. So let's just drag this here and then click continue. And let's go back to the game. And let's see if it that works out. So yep, you can see now stop building stackers, it started building the warp prism. So it's building our warp prism. There we go. So now it'll start building more stalkers again. So yeah, the the built-in um, Sharky framework micro is pretty advanced. Um, doesn't have any problems against the built-in AI. And the warp prism will juggle units around it'll keep the low ones in the back and help a lot and it'll switch to to warp in mode when there's units ready to warp and stuff like that so yeah there we go we have our build um if you want to add more builds you can um you can just go here, make new builds, add them here, and uh, just go away and build, build as much as you want. So once you have your bot done and you want to add it to the AI Arena ladder, um, you need something called ladderbots.json inside your project. So if you click your project, add a new file, New item. Um, we need to add a new JSON file. You can just call it whatever you want here. Well, you need to call it ladderbots.json, but you can select whatever you want and then just change it later. So delete all this stuff. And if you look at so first you need to go to properties instead of do not copy you want to copy always build action none save so basically if you look at the example on their website they have an example too but you call it the name of your bot here you put in your race here the type for our type it's .NET Core since we're using the Sharky framework and it uses G -sharp .NET Core and then the name of the bot.dll. And you can, if you named yours differently, it would have to match the name to your project here. So once you save that, you go to release mode and build it. And then if you right click program that CS and open containing folder, it'll bring you to the folder of your bot. So you go to bin, and then release, and then .NET 5. And all of this stuff is what you need to run your bot. So you select all this, right click, send to compressed zip folder, and then you name that the name of your bot. 
So then if you go to the website for AI Arena, if you create an account and stuff like that, then you can click upload new bot, um, type, in, type in the name of your thing, choose the zip file that you just did, select the race, select the type, which is .NET Core, type up the name, and then you'd click upload and you're good to go. Your bot is on the ladder. So if you need any uh, extra help, um, if you go to the website and join the Discord, there's tons of people that'll help you, including me. And I hope to see your bots on the ladder.